All right, folks. After that extended break, we are back. I am Scott Cannon. Over there is... Reverend Dale Campbell. Yes, we are back here on WLTH 1370 AM, Issues and Answers Friday, Scott and the Rev. And before we got to the happy happies, we were talking about these environmental disruptors in our communities that are having effects on our society, which brought me, unfortunately, to another uh, new study from the CDC, Rev, that actually found that glyphosate, which we just named in the last story as being possibly one of the big uh, factors uh, in causing autism in our children. Mm -hmm. uh, the controversial ingredient has, is, that is found in weed killers, including specifically Roundup brand, mm. is present in 80%, 80% of the urine samples drawn from children and adults in the United States. Glyphosate. Where is it? An ingredient found in weed killer. Right. Where is it coming from? Our, our food. Like here, here's what here's. Uh, oh. Right, okay. right, right. Like so, okay. it's found in eighty percent of the urine samples j drawn from children and adults in a U.S. health study. Now, uh, the report by a unit of the Centers for Disease Control found that out of the urine samples that were taken by a group of Americans intended to be representative of the U.S. population, eight, uh, uh, most of them were laced with detectable traces of glyphosate. This is an active ingredient in herbicides sold around the world now, including widely used uh, the widely used Roundup brand. Now, a third of the participants were between 6 years old and 18 years old. Now, academics and private researchers have been noting high levels of the herbicide in analysis of human urine samples for many years. But the mm -hmm. CDC has only recently started examining the extent of human exposure to glyphosate in the U.S. And its work comes at a time when mounting concerns and controversy over how pesticides in food and water impact human and environmental health. Now, both the amount and prevalence of glyphosate found in human urine has been rising steadily since the 1990s when Monsanto introduced genetically engineered crops designed to be sprayed directly with Roundup. Hmm. Ooh. According to research published in 2017 by the University of California, San Diego School of Medicine researchers, more than 200 million pounds of glyphosate is used annually by U.S. farmers on their fields. The weed killer is sprayed directly over genetically engineered crops, such as corn and soybeans, and also over non-genetically engineered crops like wheat and oats. Oh, man, I eat oatmeal every day. As a, a desiccant Oops. to dry crops out prior to harvest. M many farmers also use it on fields before the growing season, including spinach growers and almond producers. It is considered the most widely used herbicide in history. Residue of glyphosate has been documented in an array of popular food made with crops sprayed with glyphosate, including baby food. Wow. Baby food, Ralph. <laughs> wow. They got the glyphosate. In the, this is why I say, this is why I say you parents are facing it from every single angle in this culture. And that's how we know that we're about to have a, a real big change in our society. Our caller that calls, he is right about that. We are we are going to have a big change in our society, okay? Because you don't mess with parents, okay? The primary route for exposure for children is through their diets. Now, Monsanto and company that, brought, that bought it in 2018, Bayer, who have their own history, uh, okay? Bayer who just bought Monsanto in 2018 was actually sued in, in the 20, 2000s decade for knowingly giving people AIDS. Ref, have you heard about that? No, I hadn't. Yes, Bayer w sold this product called Factor 8 to hemophiliacs in South, in South America and Europe. And in France, some of the people involved actually went to prison because they were giving this tainted AIDS blood to people, to hemophiliacs. And people died because of this. So this is now who owns uh, Monsanto Bayer. Um, wow. Now, they have maintained that glyphosate 
and Roundup products are safe because this is what they do. And that residues in food and human urine are not a health risk. Again, this is the company that gave people AIDS. <laughs> and the company that is putting uh, glyphosate in your children's baby food. Now, they are at odds with many researchers at and the International Agency for Research on Cancer, a unit of the World Health Organization, which classified glyphosate as a probable human carcinogen in 2015. The, the EPA has taken the opposite stance, classifying glyphosate as not likely to be carcinogenic. But last month, a federal appeals court issued an opinion vacating the agency's safety determination and ordering the agency to give further consideration evidence of glyphosate risk uh, now in europe they actually ban this stuff from their food so that in, in in like the eu like they found out a long time ago now why we in america take this is beyond me and this is one of the reasons why i attack the corporate media so much because the corporate media as we talked about at the beginning of the show they will joke around about they'll talk about herschel walker's you know nonsense so they'll talk about jill biden you know you know making an ill ill-advised crack about tacos and hispanics but this is the type of stuff that they should be talking about on a nightly basis right mm -hmm. but who owns them you know who owns them pfizer owns them you know uh mm -hmm. the, the 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 corporations own them so you know when, when it comes to things like this we can change the type of of uh, weed killers we use i've i'm learning about this i use weed killer every all the time rev I, I haven't checked it to see if it has glyphosate in in the weed killer i buy but that's definitely something i can personally do or you or anybody listening to this show and say okay well you know when I, next time i buy something to kill weeds it won't be it won't be round up or something that has this type of glyphosate in it. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think it's going to change? Do you think knowing these types of things, do they change the way you, uh, the, you know, the things you use? Or do you do you think that people even care? <laughs> I don't use weed killer. Right. Any weed. We, in fact, we don't use any chemicals at all in our garden. Right. For that, for the reason, you know, that we're talking about this stuff now. Right. You know, we we intend to eat the stuff that we grow. Oh, okay. You know, so I'm not trying to put nothing that's going to put me in the hospital. <laughs> so you have a garden where, where you uh, you make food? Yeah. Uh, wow. See, that, that's one of the things that I've always uh, admired. And uh, I remember when I used to... Uh, uh, when I used to work with booze at, uh, on uh, Mondays and we did the uh, Juneteenth, the Juneteenth at, at Roosevelt, they were actually they, they were actually having their own garden at Roosevelt High School that was uh, homegrown stuff. I think the students were actually growing the the different food. And that's another one of those things that it seems like we've gotten away from that might be causing some of the problems that we're having. In our in our community, where you know, particularly in in cities like Gary, people don't grow their own food, and people in our communities aren't buying food from locally sourced stuff. So we're dependent on these giant companies. Mm -hmm. We're dependent on these giant companies who are using this to these toxic chemicals to poison us. And so you know, what what exactly what type of vegetables do you grow? Uh, squash, tomatoes, spinach. Uh, I think uh, collard greens this year. Grapes. Love me some greens. Yeah. Um, sweet potatoes. Ooh, all right. Yeah. Uh, pretty diverse, and we added some flowers this year mm. to the garden. Um, because the girls like flowers. Oh. Uh. But also, Lanita tries to plant things that that support the echo structure of the yeah. entirety. Yeah. So we try to plant uh, things that will deal with uh, uh, insect population. We try to plant things that would deal with the natural, the animals that would uh, 
you know, possibly eat other things. Uh, and it's, it's, it's really cool. You know, it's one of the reasons that, uh, you know, we're happy here yeah. in Gary. Um, right. You couldn't do that in California. Not not in not in Paris, California. Not in Riverside County. You couldn't couldn't grow stuff like was that. Was it because it was too expensive? To... Too hot. Oh, the, oh, the okay. dirt's not good. Oh. Um, water costs too much. It doesn't rain hardly at all. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, you put all that together. The, the things we do here in Gary, we could never do out right. there in California. Right. That's one of the reasons why I I never I, I stopped saying I wanted to leave Gary because funny enough, when I was young. I always wanted to go to California. I always go, man, you know what? I'm going to get so far away from Gary and get out of California. And, like, because my nephew lives out there. He he moved out to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at what they're going through in terms of housing. Yes. Jesus. Like, you have to you have to be almost a millionaire to be able to afford to buy a house out there. Here in the city of Gary, you know, you can buy a house and have a garden and and sort of circumvent this poison crap that, you know, we're getting from uh, Roundup mm-hmm. farmers by having your own, growing your own tomatoes and squash and sweet potatoes and all this other stuff. You can sort of circumvent that. And that's what we, we need more of. We need more uh, urban farming. We need more farmers in, in, in our community and people to have their own, uh, their own farms and their own little patches of earth. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just like. Uh... Hold on, caller. Someone complained recently about the fact that um, uh, Brothers Keeper has a farm, yeah, a little urban farm uh, near there, near that that building, and I'm like, who could hate that? It, it's it's amazing because it's rooted in the notion that Broadway should be this, uh, basically, this this microcosm, this this imitation of New York City of Upper Manhattan, I guess, where it's just buildings. And mm-hmm. there's hustle and bustle and all this stuff going on. Well, you know what? Uh, we don't have to be defined by what was. Mm-hmm. We really don't. Uh, we, can, we can start new. There, there's nothing that holds us to, to an identification with U.S. Steel anymore. Certainly not the money that it brings into the city, not the, the jobs that it brings to the city, uh, there's nothing other than the fact that it occupies the lakefront. Right. You know, we need we need to find a new identity. I absolutely agree. And this show, more than anything, I think more than any other, has sort of shown me that we do need to find another identity because once we start seeing the sort of environmental hazards affecting the very development of children, I mean, it's not like I didn't know this before, but for some reason reading this about autism, and about glyphosate and these types of things, you know, it, it sort of brings home to me that you're right. We do have to find a new identity, but I don't know. That, that's why I'm not the mayor. <laughs> I mean, I don't envy Jerome Prince at all trying to figure out what is Gary, Indiana, if we don't have these huge polluting steel mills on our lake yeah. and all these trucking companies. What What is Gary, Indiana? Like, who are we? What do we do? I mean, I think at one point, I remember hearing when I first came here that at one point, uh, Mayor Wilson Freeman was thinking about actually downsizing. In fact, I remember reading an article about it, just shrinking the the city. And yeah, yeah. That was I about I 10 actually years ago. I think I remember suggesting I ran into her one day and said, you know, why not? Since since most of the East Side has become depopulated anyway, and most of the homes on the East Side are older, mm-hmm. why not just eminent domain? The, the residents that are still there uh, mm-hmm. offer to swap, do some property swaps. I'm, I'm sure the city, you know, has taken possession of a, a fair amount of homes on the west side, you know, that are newer, mm-hmm. you know, because of tax uh, purposes, and, and offer them a, a property trade. Right. And then just take that whole east part and just knock it down. Yeah. The only problem is, of course, if you do that, you 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 either have a very narrow land bridge to Miller, or mm. else you're basically separating from Miller, and because people are so accustomed to thinking of Miller as the jewel, right, of this town, they don't want to do that. Yeah. Um. 
but really the west side of the western part of Gary is an attractive area too right it is and a smaller footprint might be easier to maintain mm. you know now I know that the put part of the pushback to that will be well how do you know that we won't grow to be a large you know 150,000 population city again yeah well one reason I think that that won't happen again is because there's no need for it economically there is no need for for that kind of population to move to this area well see here's the thing like what I'm seeing is what is happening in the southwest mm -hmm. and in much of the sort of hotter climates Texas California the wildfires that we're seeing out west Mm -hmm. the droughts we're seeing out west i do think a lot of those people are gonna have to move back east because a lot of those people are from here right like uh you know one of my biggest pet peeves in sports is all these new expansion teams in places like arizona yeah and and texas and like random places mm -hmm. and you go what like why does arizona have a hockey team like what does that have to do with anything like i, I genuinely hate expansion but that's because so many people since the 1950s and 60s really since air conditioning all decided to move out to Arizona, to mm -hmm. Texas, uh, to Nevada, mm -hmm. and these types of places. But now, with the type of droughts and wildfires there, a lot of those people are going to have to move back east, okay? And this is why, why we've done shows here before where I tell people, do not sell your house here in the city of Gary yeah. or in northwest Indiana. We are on 20% of the world's fresh water. Yeah. 20% of the world's fresh water is in our backyard, the Great Lakes. Um, anybody who has the Great Lakes in their backyard is going to be, you know, in like Flint, you know, for, for in this next century as we have more uh, droughts and we start seeing more uh, wars fought over water. Because Kamala Harris just recently admitted that they're going to be fighting wars over water uh, fairly uh, quickly. I think that was earlier part of this year. She admitted that. But mm. places like Gary, Indiana, where we sit right on, right on mm -hmm. Lake Michigan, you know, if we don't let U.S. still completely kill it, you know, we will be in a really good position. And I do think a lot of people will have to come back here at some point. I think that is an interesting point. And from that perspective, I do think... Um, that we do have something to offer. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I just, I know that we don't need a lot of people because we've got this huge industrial need. Mm -hmm. for Even industry is changing. I mean, okay, we talk about the trucking industry, but look, right now, they're working on driverless trucks. Right. You know, so if that's, with the direction Ooh. that the trucking industry is going, Oof. we're talking about, hey, you know, we're we're a major thoroughfare. But if the trucks that are being developed, you know, especially the newer trucks, that, you know, to make sure that they're not as heavily polluting, you know, they turn out to be driverless too. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? You have this huge, you know, these trucking firms that don't need people that uh, don't make as much polluting. Maybe they're electric fuel, you know, electric engines. Right. But again, they don't really need a lot of people to run them. Right. Especially as they continue the developments in the realm of artificial intelligence. Yep. So you will have a driverless truck driven by a computer. You program its destination. It doesn't have to stop every 10 hours for rest. Hmm. Well, I, I, I see that, and, and I'm a lot of truck drivers are listening to this and breaking out. And <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let me get this caller. Hello, 